Hello everyone. This is an image of our loft. It has lots of insulation, so we'll keep the house below it nice and warm, right? Well, actually, in this case, no, that's wrong. The insulation under the boards is approximately 300 millimetres. That's about a foot thick. So one would think that this is a well insulated loft. The insulation stops here, just where it should do. It leaves a gap for the draft to come up from the fascia board and the soffit, and they're down by the gutter. This draft blows through the loft and it's needed to remove any moisture that builds up in the loft. It'll prevent damp and keep wood rot away. So everything in the loft looks good. We've moved to the bedroom that's under where we were in the loft. Now there's a funny thing. See how the ceiling slopes just here? Well, where is that slope up in the loft? Let's have a look at the loft again. As you can see, there is no slope. It's all flat up here. Or is it? I'll just finish off this sketch of a house. Now it's a section through a house. It's not anatomically correct, uh, but it's good enough for the point that I want to get across. Now, you see we have the roofing tiles coming down here. They sit on top of the roof rafter. At the end of the roof rafter, we have the fascia board here and the soffit, which fits underneath. On the front of the fascia board, we have the gutters for collecting the water. This is the inside of the house. House We have the loft volume up here. This is the insulation that fits on top of the house in the loft. And these are the walls that hold the side of the house up. Now, this is a cavity wall. We have the outside wall. We have insulation between the two walls. And then we have the inner wall here. And you'll notice that the insulation in the loft comes across the top of the insulation in the walls and that gives us a nice thermal barrier between the inside and the outside of the house. Now it has a 90 degree corner here in the top of the room just like our house hasn't. Now why on earth would they want to put a slope across here? Well with a complete disregard to the amount of cost I've made another drawing. Now this drawing has a slope just here as our room has. Now why on earth would they want to put a slope across here? Well it's all to make money. They want to make the houses as cheap as they can uh, so they can make more money. So what they've done is this part of the wall they never built. So the house is actually shorter than it was than it should be so the house sits here. Now that does two things. It makes the the loft area up here, the attic, smaller. But the main thing it does is it breaks the thermal barrier from the loft to the top of the walls here. So this part of the ceiling hasn't got any insulation on. Now that's not good. Now, the way that the house is made, these rafters have got gaps in between. There's another rafter behind this and, and also some in front. Now, the gaps between those rafters, they allow a draft to come through the soffit around here and then through the loft. Now that draft is important because it evaporates any water that condenses in the loft and it also deters woodworm and other bugs from sticking around up there because it's not very moist. So we can't block up these holes because it is quite... You now you think well if I filled that all up with insulation it will make the room warmer. And it will, but unfortunately it may rot your loft out if you do fill up those holes. So it's very important to leave an air gap for the air to run around. So we've got this piece of ceiling here, which is open to the elements. Uh, now this is not being rained on, but it's certainly getting cold. And what happens is during the winter, when it's cold here, the air inside the house is warm and moist and it condenses on this piece of board. Well, that makes it damp. And if you've got a damp piece of, uh, of wall in a house, then you're going to start growing little funguses on there. And then you're going to get a black bloom grow across here. And that's what happens in our house. This becomes black. Now, how are we going to get around this? Well, we can't put insulation on the inside of the loft. So, so that only leaves one other place. And that is to put insulation on the inside of the house like that and re-establish our thermal block that goes around here. Now if we could do that, that would insulate the roof, sorry, that would insulate the room 
and it would also get rid of the condensation which would form here because this is no longer cold. Hmm, that's looking good. So, how can we do that? Well, here's the bedroom ceiling again. We need to attach insulation to this surface. Now there's lots of ways we could do this, but I want to make it a permanent fixture. So I'm going to make a box on the ceiling and then fit the insulation inside that box. There are joists above the plasterboard that make up our ceiling. If we can find their position, we can screw through the plasterboard into them. Now, we could use a metal detector to detect the nails used to hold the plasterboard onto the joists. Or, if you look just here, you can see a lighter stripe in the dark bloom that's on the ceiling. That stripe is where the rafter sits on the other side of the plasterboard. It keeps the ceiling a little warmer and drier, so the bloom doesn't grow so well. That means that we've found the position of all of the rafters. We need wooden ribs to fit onto the ceiling and secure to the joists. This is a prototype rib I made from offcuts to establish the correct size. Once I was happy, I made a few more. I've started to secure this first rib into the ceiling. Its securing screws pass through the plasterboard and screw into the rafter on the other side. I'm using three screws to hold the rib in place. You'll notice I've drilled and countersunk two holes for each screw. Now, I did this in case the first hole was sitting over a nail in the plasterboard. I could have a second attempt through the second hole. Hmm, as it happens, I never did hit a screw. I fitted three ribs across the width of the ceiling, one at each end and one in the centre. Using a few screws as anchor points, I pulled strings over the surface at the front and bottom of the ribs. This was to show their levels. You may be able to see three shims under the rib furthest away. This is where the ceiling was uneven and started to rise. Once the levels were set, I fitted the other ribs into position on the ceiling, making sure they were in line and level with the strings. The last rib was mounted to the south wall. Yes, there's an oops when it comes to cutting the angle at the bottom of the rib. The less said about that, the better. It was lined up with the other ribs using a straight edge and then attached to the wall. Now, the other thing we have to do is box in the ventilation duct. Now, this is the inlet to our uh, to the house ventilation system. You can see one of the ports there, which is blowing air into the house. The air in the house gets changed three times an hour, so the blurb says. I mount a sheet of sterling board, also known as OSB board, on the ceiling. The left hand side is attached to the rib. The right hand side is screwed up into the ceiling joist in the corner of the room. This sheet will provide a place to attach the boxing on the ceiling. I then started to build the frame for the boxing. First side of the boxing is screwed into place. I'm using 6mm thick MDF board. I cut a side to shape and add a support. The side is in place. A piece of frame has been added along this edge on the inside and both sides have been mounted to it. Frame is built, sides are added and the boxing in is complete. I fit the front and bottom supports to the ceiling ribs. The wood running along the front of this assembly is held in place with pocket hole screws through the front of each of the joists. Also notice the rebate machined along this bottom edge. The wood running along the wall to form the rear edge has been cut at an angle to match the lower surface of the ribs. The boxing is going to be painted. I used 6mm MDF board as that has a good surface finish and will take the paint well. The 6mm MDF sheet slides nicely into the rebate at the top of the ribs. It also fits well on the wall support at the lower end of the ribs. I fitted the three MDF sheets in position, made sure all was OK and then removed them again to fit the insulation. Down in the conservatory we cut 70mm thick hard foam insulation to size. Because some of the sides the insulation must butt up against are not flat or square, we cut the hard insulation smaller than the voids to be filled and then use fibreglass insulation to fill all the gaps and hold everything in position. On the wall between the two windows we want to mount an electric clock. You never know, you may even want to put a TV there sometime in the future. The thing is whatever needs to go there will probably need power so we're taking a 2.5mm square cable to a connection box which will be mounted in the centre of the boxing, around about there. 
Once all the insulation is in place, the 6mm MDF sheets are screwed into position. An isolator switch is fitted at the north end of the boxing. This will isolate the power running into the connection box between the two windows, and the power will come up from the upstairs ring main on a spur running inside the new wardrobe. The connection box, sitting in the box in between the two windows, will allow the connection of a flex mains lead to the twin and earth of the house wiring. There is no power there now, but I still insulate the ends of the wires with electrical PVC tape. On the home stretch now. We undercoat, then paint the woodwork. It looks a lot better in white. The last job is to fit two pieces of wooden trim over the two joints, just here and here. And that's it! Our ceiling in the bedroom is now insulated from one side right across to the other. If you've enjoyed this video, can you please do me a big favour and press the thumbs up icon? It doesn't cost you a thing, but it does show the YouTube algorithm that people are enjoying my videos, and that's really important. Thanks. Now, you may be thinking, how on earth could a house like ours get built? How could it be designed and inspected and passed? Well, the reason being, it was designed and built in the 1950s. And of course, in those days, there wasn't so much emphasis put on to the high level of insulation that we have nowadays. And that's how it got through. Now, if you have a house like ours, and it has slopey ceilings upstairs, then there's a couple of checks you can do to see if it uh, has the correct insulation. The first one is wait until it's cold outside and it's warm inside the house. Put your hand up on the roof, sorry, on the ceiling right above you, see what the temperature's like, and then move your hand across to the slope and see if that's cold. If that's a lot colder than the ceiling above you, chances are it hasn't got any insulation on top. Now then, if it's the same temperature, what you need to do is then go into the loft and check to see that they haven't shoved loads of insulation between the tiles and the plasterboard on the other side of the slope. Because if they have, that's going to stop that draft blowing through your loft. Now that draft evaporates any moisture that's up there, and it also deters insects from living up there as well. So that's what you need to do. With that, this video is at an end. <laughs> Take care, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Could you do something like this? Of course you can. <laughs>